say that is because of this thing called confounding. Confounding is the biggest weakness when it comes to these sorts of studies. It's the thing we have to think about all of the time. Confounding is an alternative explanation for what seems to be a causative relationship between an exposure and an outcome. Let's look at a few things that we now know about case control studies from this example. Firstly, they're retrospective, right? Which means you can do the entire study now. You can take the history now. You can do the analysis now. They don't take years and years and years to do. And that means that they're quick, firstly, obviously, and they're cheap, right? And that's important. You don't need a huge budget to do a case control study. When we do a cohort study, our starting point is the exposure of interest, right? So we've got a cohort of people. They've been exposed to something of interest. We've collected that data and we follow them over time. And by the way, it could be a long time, right? And we're gonna come back to that. We follow them over time and we collect data about the extent to which outcomes of interest emerge in that group of people. And then of course, in the analysis, we're gonna compare people that were exposed to whatever the exposure of interest is. We're gonna compare them to people that were not exposed to that exposure, that hazard or that health intervention or whatever it is that we're looking at. And we will see the extent to which the two groups are different in terms of the outcome of interest or outcomes of interest. Interestingly, you can have multiple outcomes of interest and I'm gonna to come to that in just a second. So for example, there might be people that are drinking water from a water source and in that water source, there's a particular mineral and we don't know what that mineral is gonna do. So we follow that group of people over time. Okay, and we collect data about what happens in terms of their health outcomes and we compare them to people that drank water from a different source with that particular mineral or hazard or whatever it is that we're looking at that, that, that wasn't in the water in, in this group and we compare the outcomes of these two groups. All right, now what's important about this is that you can consider rare exposures. In other words, you could find just the few people of, you know, there might just be a handful of people all over, from all over the world who in actual fact are drinking water with that particular mineral in it, right? So you can find very rare exposures and follow, follow them over time and have a look at the outcomes, right? So rare exposures. The other thing that's important here is that you can look at multiple outcomes, right? Multiple possible outcomes. You can look at the extent to which this particular, particular mineral made their hair grow faster or the height of the people or the cancer that emerged in this group of people. Multiple, exp multiple outcomes, rare exposures, right? And, and the point that I'm making here is to compare it to case control studies where our starting point was the outcome of interest so we could have rare outcomes of interest and look back at multiple possible exposures, right? So in a, in a cohort study, we can look at rare exposures and look for multiple possible outcomes. Okay, an important difference. And then of course, just to state the obvious, because this is prospective, okay, you're doing it over time, 